Okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for today's CNCF webinar, Declaratively Managing Apps in a Multi-Cluster World. I'm Jerry Fallon, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenter today, Fernando Rapol, Solution Engineer at Giant Swarm. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to drop in your questions in there, and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF, and as such, is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of the Code of Conduct. Please be respectful of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be available later today on the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io slash webinars. And with that, I'll hand it over to our presenter for today's webinar. Hi, Gary. Thank you for the presentation and welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about yeah, how we manage appli applications declaratively in, in a multi-cluster world. Um, and yeah, as you say, I've been working as a solution engineer in John Schwarm for more than two years. Um, so I've been helping customers uh, to manage uh, their, their own cloud native uh, platforms. Um, when, I, when I say a platform, um, I say that because it's just not running Kubernetes cluster anymore. It's managing also the components, application, or tooling that the, that the user, the, the developers, and the operators need in order to, to run successfully the world. And, and by managing, I, I mean manage the entire lifecycle, monitor them, upgrade them, type of operations that these applications need uh, over all the clusters. So at the end, the goal is to enable the, the IT departments to build the, the, the shared platform, uh, trying to remove all the burden from their shoulders and let them focus on the, the real business value. So um, the idea of the talk is to tell you the story why, why and how we have built uh, what we call the, the application platform, our open source project. Um, and I would like to start explaining what was the reason why we took that decision. Um, and also comment the, the two paradigms that exist out there in terms of managing applications and infrastructure. Uh, after, I will define briefly how we see the, the cloud, uh, how is a cloud native application built and how do we run them in, in the, all, the, all the targets, all the clusters that, that uh, we need to manage. Uh, later, I will explain how, how we have built the, the app platform itself, uh, the architecture and the components. And finally, I will, I will show you how it works in, in action. Um, and I will close uh, sharing with you what are the future, future plans of, 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 the, of the project. So let's start. Um, nowadays, running a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster, has become a commodity. Why? Mm, well, when we started uh, start the, the journey uh, three years ago, provisioning and managing a Kubernetes cluster was, was a big deal. And at that time, there was uh, some tooling to help with that task, but the phase space environment, together with the maturity of the projects and also the complexity of the platform, meant that the companies need entire teams to operate and manage them. Today, the, the world is different, and we have good, to good tooling we have companies that uh, are creating distributions uh, that are platforms that helps uh, provide um, or provide us uh, um, easier and safer way to run run the, the platform itself. Um, we have also uh, this Kubernetes as a service, uh, all the big players, AWS, Azure, DigitalOcean, and many more, offer to you um, a Kubernetes cluster with, with a click of a button, right? So the trend that we, we see in the enterprise world is um, to worry less about the platform and focus more on the, the core values of the companies. So yeah, build, build applications faster, provide value to the end user uh, as quick as possible. So as a consequence, consequence of the previous point, um, we have seen a, a, a shift in the, in the scene. At the beginning, most of the companies were running big clusters. So you have one, two big clusters, and you, you were probably relying on these multi-tenancy and isolation features that Kubernetes provide and also the containers. But over time, uh, we have realized 
that th this carries a set of problems, uh, a set of different issues. The isolation is not perfect. At the end of the day, your containers have to share a kernel of the, of the different machines with other, other tenants, and in many different ways, they can be affected. Also, um, in, in the cluster, in the platform, you are sharing components uh, between, between your workloads. So components like English controller, the servers, on the scalers, um, potentially a chain in the configuration of, of one of these components can affect to, to all, the, all the applications that run in the, in the platform, right? So a result, uh, together with the ability to create and manage a um, high number of clusters easier, we have seen that companies are, have decided to, to segregate the workloads and, and shift uh, the paradigm, um, having um, a bigger number of clusters and dividing the, the application um, by different uh, manners. Needless to say, that is also carrying some, some problems and, and this will take for another talk, but yeah, uh, it's what we, we have seen. Um, at the same time, the, the, when the, sp the spreading change, uh, the maturity of the, of the core functionality in Kubernetes has, and, and all the components that has been built up in Kubernetes, um, has reached a level uh, of stability that gives us confidence to, to run our, our uh, applications um, or build uh, our tooling on top of, of Kubernetes. Um, so yeah, we, we can we have the experience enough how to configure the the workloads, applications, uh, how to assign resource resources to them, uh, health checks, uh, auto scaling, security. So yeah, and in order to run your workloads in this platform, you need to create uh, at the end a, a bundle, right? A bundle which is the configuration the infrastructure that your application needs, and, and define how it will run in the in the in the cluster, right? What we also know as, as uh, all the all the YAML files that are around uh, this this Kubernetes uh, environment, and in order to achieve this, uh, there are a bunch of tools that has been created or has been adapted uh, to to work in this new uh, in this new landscape, right? Um, and we have Helm and Customize, which uh, are tools created. Uh, when when this uh, cloud native wave started, but also we see tools like Terraform and Civil that has been adapted to to be able to to manage the application in, in that type of of environment. And finally, we have seen also that uh, we need to, to to move this application package to to the the, the environment where it's going to run, right? It, we, and we need to to. Uh, configure this this uh, this application in in uh, a different way depending on where it's, it's running. So there there has been an explosion of, of different tools that are uh, helping us with this part with the uh, integration and the delivery of the application. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said before, there was some apps, uh, some type, some projects that were before that has been adapted, or there has been a bunch of so different tools created um, with this new paradigm. And each of those uh, kind of fulfill the same goal, but in, in different ways. Um, so uh, the next thing I wanted to comment is uh, the different two approaches uh, when you need to, to manage your, your application and your infrastructure, right? And it's the, the, the imperative and the declarative um, uh, paradigms. So, to explain initially, I'm going to take a, a quote from, from our phrase of, of Friends of Wave, which is the declarative means that the configuration is warranted by a set of paths instead of by a set of instructions. So for example, a declarative way, way will be there are six uh, MariaSQL servers in this, in this environment uh, rather than start six uh, MariaSQL servers and tell me if they work or not. Uh, so at the end, the, the imperative is uh, a set of instruction steps uh, that uh, you need to perform to reach the desired state. And it has some pros and cons. So um, normally it has, it's not idempotent. So if you run multiple times the same script, it can end that the, the desired state is, is not the same. Also, the, the state of, of, the, of the cluster or of the platform uh, is, is usually safe in a secondary place, like uh, if you are, have used Terraform, you have a, a TF um, 
a, a file where, where you um, save the state of, of the cluster and you have to, to keep track of, of this, uh, this file. Uh, it usually helps whether in terms of uh, define and, and, and structure the dependencies of your application, but uh, the, the way that it works, the, the steps that you define, define when you to create the, the workflow uh, has its own limitations. So it cannot do um, whatever you want to maybe to do, right? So in this uh, um, panorama, we see uh, there are tools, classic tools like Jenkins or Ansible. Even there, there is a pro program languages that also follow this this pattern. Um, but uh, I have to say also that uh, some of them has been adapted to to the declarative uh, paradigm. So some of them can work in both ways. And in the declarative part. Uh, what we want to do is we want to give our system the desired state. Uh, so you provide the, the configuration and the resources and the system will, will take action to, to, to reach that state. And normally there is uh, a logic uh, embedded in the system to uh, be able to fulfill this, this, this desired state. Um, generally it, it has the benefit that this is in the impotent that doesn't matter how many times you apply the first type, the configuration it will uh, mm, cause the, the same the same result. There will not be difference because at the end you are defining the, the search state of, of your application. The state also is preserved in the in the system, so you don't need to, to maintain it uh, out of there. Um, and the, the bad thing or the difficult thing that we have seen is that you, the defining the dependencies in the application is not so, so easy. Uh, and so, yeah, um, right relations between different applications or right, the database and an application, all this stuff is, is not so easy as, as you can achieve with a, a imperative uh, tool. Um, yeah, and in this in this scenario, Kubernetes is a good example of, of declarative paradigms, but yeah, confirmation, Plumi, or languages like Haskell or SQL are also declarative uh, in the in the how they run the, the resources. So uh, in order to show you why we build our platform, let's go quickly through the steps that uh, we we are need to do in order to create uh, our application as a Kubernetes uh, style, right? So if you, we are familiarized with this, uh, this graphic, yeah, there's a set of steps that you usually um, are known in the, in the DevOps um, um, paradigm, which is a developer called the application, right, in a given language. Uh, hopefully this application is small and it's largely coupled. Um, then the 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 container they containerize they build the application they defend the configuration and, and then it goes it's to start the, the CI workflow which is how you um, integrate and build this this um, this container or this package and how do you test it uh, from that point you uh, usually use a tool uh, that helps you with the delivery of the of the application, uh, so yeah, depends on on a set of of conditions. You will deploy the application in a different environment with a different configuration, um, and finally, uh, uh, your application uh, will be uh, monitored. And previously, obviously, you have to instrument it. But yeah, the the landscape or, or the platform itself it will help you to to monitor the application uh, that is fulfilling the, the, the criteria, the certain criteria that you have defined. And, and this is the same for each chain that you introduce to your application. So the, the cycle is, is retriever and, and you go through all, all these steps. Um, and for the most of these steps, we are relying on existing tools. There are great tools for that. But in the two last steps is where, where our ad platform is coming to, to help. And I will show you later. So uh, first in the in the line will be the, the container layer, right? So uh, this is the first abstraction layer, and we all know the, the properties that it it, it gives us, like uh, the overhead is uh, great in terms of portability, uh, has a first isolation, um, it has a great community, has uh, good consistency, 
So all these things, there's a lot of projects that uh, with different flavors that help you to to control uh, containers, to create uh, and, and manage uh, containers. Um, so this this will be uh, assume <laughs> that you know if you are in the stock. Uh, next is the application configuration. So uh, usually you have to define the, the configuration of your application relying on a set of different um, concepts, which is, will be uh, if you are in Kubernetes, the config map or, or the secrets or environment variables. And at the same time, you have to to define the you have to define the um, the infrastructure part where you decide which kind of policies in terms of security you want to to have for this application. What are the restrictions in the networking? So which services can talk with my service, which not. Um, also, in case that you need to access to the the API of the of the system, which uh, access will have this application. So we we'll call the role based access control. The auto scaling settings, how the traffic is going to to end up in the service. So this kind of the the the, the configuration of the of the English traffic and and yeah and so on. Um, and then uh, all this configuration, all this infrastructure should be packaged right in a bundle. Um, and for that, uh, we rely on in, in system tools, uh, like Helm is the one that we choose, uh, that help us, for example, with the template, right? So, so these configuration files or the infrastructure lights could, could differ depending on the environment or the conditions where the, applica where, where the application is going to be deployed. So having this templated is, is the ECBL, right? And applying the the configuration and deploying time is is what will make us uh, make uh, our application portable. And then we need a system to to distribute easily this this bundle. We need uh, some kind of release management, and also the, this part of configurability to, to be able to, to configure the, the the application when it's going to be uh, installed, deployed, or upgraded. Um, and for that is why we decide that this is kind of what we need. And, and Helm in this case uh, is the standard de facto of the community and it fulfill all the things that we need. Um, so that part is, is covered with, with Helm. And, and then, uh, so all having said, uh, what is left in the, in the, in the life cycle or say in the other way, uh, what are the goals of the application platform that we want to build is the the manage the 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 goal of manage multiple deployments over several targets. Um, so at the end, we will have like a meta meta control plane cluster, like a meta con cluster, Kubernetes cluster that uh, we define with targets and which applications uh, we need to run. And, and yeah, and there will be uh, there uh, some logic that will work to to achieve this. We need also different levels of configuration, so depend on the environment, depend on some criteria, and this application will be merged and pushed to the deployment part. Uh, we rely in the in the declarative way, the declarative uh, approach. So we wanted to yeah uh, run. Uh, our application uh, uh, resources, like uh, we will run uh, our pods or deployments. Um, finally, we wanted to provide a monitoring out of the box for, for our application. So making it easier for the, the operators uh, get track of the, of the workloads. Um, so yeah, at the end, for the ones that has <laughs> realized like, the, this is our kind of the tenants of Kubernetes. So uh, yeah, mm, Kubernetes offers uh, this maintainability of the state. So and there is contains this declarative approach uh, in 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 his trials. So um, yeah, the, the idea is uh, precisely um, if you want to create a deployment, you de you give uh, to the API the deployment with all the parameters, and, and Kubernetes will try to fulfill. Uh, complete this task. Uh, we wanted to do the same way. And um, if you want to deploy an application, which is an abstraction layer of, uh, of the deployment, we want to do the same. So we apply application, and it will it will do all the all this stuff. Uh, then we have the observability part, also in the Kubernetes. So Kubernetes offers 
this status field in you know, the resources where uh, exposed the, the status of, of the resource in, in any moment. Uh, we wanted to rely into the 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 sorry yeah the the vision that Kubernetes has uh, in order to automate the different actions, so what they call controllers, operators, and how they embed the logic to exactly go from the current state to the, the, the shared state. And also we needed some, some type of versioning, so our platform can evolve um, confidently, so our users can, can use uh, different APIs over time. Um, and the, the where we run in this platform uh, help us uh, to develop this and um, these applications right so that's the reason why we at the end decide to build uh, our app platform upon kubernetes TLD. Um, but to see how it really works uh, you need to know a bit how uh, function the, the operator pattern so the operation pattern is a way to extend the API of Kubernetes and to enrich the functionality of it, uh, giving more, more features to the user. So we have mainly two concepts, concepts here. One is the, the custom resource, which is um, a, a new schema that you can define in Kubernetes. Uh, you provide the schema and then you submit the schema to the Kubernetes API. From that very moment, you can start creating or deleting resources, and you will benefit from um, yeah, some functionality that Kubernetes gives to you, like validation or authorization on or all this part that has already built, built in, the, in the API. And then you have an operator, which is like um, a container running in, in your platform uh, that embeds some logic, some logic about this custom resource that you have created. Um, in notes how to react on different events because at the end Kubernetes is a uh, um, event driver driven um, environment so for each event that happens in Kubernetes related to a specific custom source you can hook um, your code into this kind of events and react uh, to at the end exactly uh, try to reach this desired state that the user has uh, wants to to uh, to apply. So, what are the concepts of the app platform? Well, uh, first we have created a, a resource that is called App Catalog, and the App Catalog is the representation of uh, it's, it's a collection of uh, app uh, packages, app definitions um, that at the end are Alchem package and our charts and, and it let us define the first level also of configuration so in you can define some some values in your app catalog cr and this will be the, the first values that will be applied um, to to your application um, and yeah for example you can define the registry that ha will have uh, all the applications in that, in that catalog by default and then you can also define some metadata like the title, the description, the logo, which uh, will be useful for giving more information to the users. Then we have the application uh, custom resource, uh, which is the really the, the, the resource that holds all the entity that holds all the information uh, related with the, the deployment of this application. So the, the intention uh, to install the application in, in, a, in a given target with a given configuration. Um, so, um, saying that the schema will contain the, the target cluster, which is the, the where it's going to be installed the, the application. Also, it, co it will contain some configuration, which is the one that we call cluster scope, which um, will contain um, values like the, the provider, it contain values like, like the size of the cluster, things like that. So you can, based on, on these parameters, define how it's going to, to behave your, your application. And then you, you can also pass what we call the, the user values, which is the, the user that, uh, the final user that provides um, the latest uh, changes in the configuration, which uh, depend on the cluster. You want to define um, uh, some parameters that are um, um, especially for, for your 
uh, type of, of deployment, right? Um, then we have some metadata related with the with application, the the name that you are given to the to the, the this installation of the application. So the instance of the application where uh, where it's going to be in which namespace is going to be installed, which version of the application will be installed, and and so on. Um, and then we have the the app operator, and the app operator is is the the operator that contains the logic. Uh, um, to manage the, the app CR because the app catalog is just an informational uh, resource for now so it's only to, to hold the information but is, there is no operator behind that does anything in the cluster but the, the, the application CR um, is managed by the, the, this operator that we created and it helps us with the validation and also managing all the configuration so as we said there's like three levels of configuration in the cluster, um, and then uh, the operator um, checks that all, all is in, all is valid, and and, and merge all these values. Uh, also, manage the creation and the update of the charge CR, which is the, the next CR that I'm going to explain. Uh, and and this is the entity that at the end is pushed to its cluster, its target cluster that uh, will be uh, and deploy the application. And then also expose some some information on uh, status of uh, of the de deployment of, of the application. Yeah. Then we have the charge CR, and as I said, this is the the actually the the resource that holds all the information that is needed to install the the application in in, in a given cluster, and it has all the configuration merge and merge in in one in one single file, one single config map in this case. And also contains all the information related to the name, namespace, version um, that is needed. Uh, and then we have the chart operator, uh, which is the, the operator that holds all the all the logic uh, related with the deployment itself. So in our case, we are using Helm under the hood. Uh, so chart operator like kind of extract and, uh, all the all the logic of the deployment. And at the end, the intention is if we want to change the, the deployment tool uh, at some given point, we don't need to change anything. It's just the logic behind this, this operator. So we could like offer in the, in the future uh, to manage different types of deployments. Also, this operator is reacting to changes in the configuration and applying to the, those changes to the application. And also, it's exposing the status of the, of the application at any given time. So to put this in a picture, uh, clarify, um, this is how it will like, uh, look like. Uh, we have a control plane cluster, a, a meta cluster, where we run our app, app operator. And we have the API, which is the Kubernetes API that operates our user. So our user uh, wants to, to uh, install different applications in different clusters. Um, for that, first, he needs to create the app catalog which is the, the, the place uh, where we define and where are leaving these, these app definitions. Uh, after this has been applied, it, can, it needs to, to apply the, the application CR, which contains all the details of the, the installation. And then the operator will start to work in order to create all the charts that are needed in each target. Uh, so the chart operator, uh, which is the operator that lives in, in each tenant cluster, is how we call it all these clusters, uh, is the, taking care that actually this uh, installation is, is produced in the, in the cluster. So um, the design uh, to split these uh, two different operations, like validation and configuration part in the part of the operator and the installation part in the chart operator is in purpose because when you are scaling and you are having a lot of clusters, you you cannot do anything. Uh, you you cannot do everything with a single operator in a control plane cluster. It will be overwhelming, and you will probably slam down the, the API of Kubernetes. So uh, we decided to to make it this to to scale. And so I'm going to show you in the demo um, how this works. And for that, I created a, a catalog, um, which is really um, where you storage the, the application, right? And um, as I said before, we are using Helm. 
and lets you package your application in a compressed file and helps you also to define an index channel that is going that then you can uh, place in whatever HTTP server and that is accessible and it will be a chart repository. So uh, you can then with this chart repository start creating the catalog. Here in the sample, I create uh, an app, uh, a stupid app, <laughs> this same kind of hello world. And then I created the index and upload it to, to GitHub. So now I'm going to, to go through the examples of, of the, um, the different CRs. Uh, and then I will run this into, into a cluster and see how it works. Um, so in the app catalog, as I say, um, I have um, this custom resource, which is uh, the, the new resource I applied to the, to the Kubernetes API on, the, on my control plane cluster, on my meta cluster. And, and there is where I define it, uh, this, this default catalog configure values. So these values are the ones that I mentioned at the, at the beginning that will be applied to all the app that are uh, storage in this uh, catalog. Then all this, all this metadata that I said before, like the logo, URL, the, the title, description. Uh, and then finally, we have the storage, which is really where these applications, uh, these charts, uh, package are and living. In this case, this GitHub repo that I created. And here I define type Helm because, as I said before, we are not using Helm right now, but in theory, uh, we could abstract it and use another tool if at some point we need to, to move to something else or add, add more features that Helm does not support. So then we have the, the app custom resource, the application custom resource. So yeah, here we also um, apply this configuration, this, this new CR to the, our meta control cluster, right? Um, and there we also define uh, a couple of things. Uh, first, the target cluster. So as you see here, you can define uh, a contest inside a cube config where where is going to be applied all these changes uh, the, the real installation of the application so here uh, we hold this information which is sensitive information because it has the token or or the or the access key of, of the cluster so we have uh, saved this in a secret and then I, we are pointing in the script config in which content it should use so you have you can even, even have a uh, a single cube config in a secret with different contests and use the same for all your applications. But also you can uh, you stay in cluster mode, which will install the, the application in, with, within the same cluster that we are running this. So in this case, in the meta cluster. Then we have uh, all the metadata, like uh, which is the catalog that refers uh, this application definition. So it's this catalog, this app catalog should resist the name of the, the application and in which namespace is going to be um, uh, installed. We have uh, the configuration part. First, we have the configuration, which is the cluster configuration. As you see in the names, uh, um, we, and you see uh, uh, ID and then cluster values. This is because inside this config mag and inside these secrets, is where uh, we are holding information that is related to the um, to the cluster itself, like the size of the cluster, in which cloud providers you is running, all this stuff that can help um, and the applications to um, I don't know deploy uh, um, a different type of resources depending on on which provider or which uh, size of cluster you are running. So you see also there is a secret always in the config. And um, this is because if there's any sensitive information instead of using a config map, you can use a secret and everything will be merged at the end. And this then the latest configuration, which is the user configuration, and it's the most important one. So and the app, app, config, app catalog configuration, this cluster configuration and the user config, or everything is going to be at the end merging one single config map and one single secret and apply in the installation time. And this is the user configuration is the one that the, the user defined and depending on the very specific uh, criteria that this application needs to have 
in order to run in a specific cluster. And finally, yeah, we have the version also that uh, the application should, should run. So finally, we have the, the chart resource, which is the, uh, remember the resource that is uh, created by the app operator in each cluster where we want to really, uh, deploy the, the application. Um, and then here is, as I say, is all this, com uh, all this configuration file that you have created as ConfiMap and passed to, to the, the app CR and the app catalog CR. All these are merged automatically by our operator in this config map and secret, and it will be used by the chart operator to deploy the, the application or to activate the application in the in the tenant cluster. We have also the the tarball, which is the the reference uh, to the to the package uh, that has to be installed with the version included. Um, and as you see here, also uh, included here the, the the status the status of this. Uh, application. So here you see the, the version that, that is running at this very moment, when it has been deployed le, uh, last time, and what is the current status, if it's pilot, pending to install, or whatever. So let's show you um, the, the demo. And for the demo, I recorded everything. I didn't want to trust in the demo bot, so I Try to challenge my video skills and I uh, record this. Um, first thing I want to show you is I'm in the control plane cluster. And um, as I told you before, uh, to use the, the app platform, you need to first create the CRTs, right? And in Kubernetes, you can use kubectl to get a specific CRT that has been created in the cluster and see the schema. And this is what we're going to do first. So we are going to get the apps and the application CR schema, and you will see that, yeah, it contains um, all the properties uh, that yeah, we have mentioned, or I showed you before. So here we see that there is yeah, uh, this name app uh, with as name of the custom source. We see that the, this is namespace, uh, namespace, and we see here an array of different versions. And for each version, we see the schema that contains the version, with yeah, each property, define it, and also if it's required, if not, and yeah, all these kind of things that it will help us in order to validate and maintain um, the resources in, uh, in the cluster automatically by the equipment. Now, um, yeah, we are going to uh, to get the, to see, check that the, the app operator is really running in this control plane cluster. So as you, as you see here, we are running three different versions of operators um, because yeah, we have currently three different versions of the of, of the operators that you can run a different application version. Sorry, uh, and yeah, it will uh, depend on the version one one or the other. Uh, now we are going to see the app catalog uh, that we are going to apply. So it's the same as I showed you before. The reference to the, the repository, the GitHub page, uh, where is leaving my, my package. Um, and yeah, um, also the, the first level of configuration, which is the config map. Um, I show you now that this is applied. So we have applied in the, the catalog and it's running in, in the cluster. Now we're going to see this, this configuration. This is the configuration that I give at the app catalog level. So this configuration will be applied to all the apps uh, packets that are defined in this cluster. Um, and it, look, it looks at the end like a value shaman. So this is going to be injected like as a value shaman. So here I put uh, just a single property. I define a single property, which is M and the value is hello. And we are applying this config map too. So right now we have the app catalog and the config map at uh, a point uh, that is related to the catalog. Um, yeah. And with this information now, uh, you can build a kubectl plugin like we do, or you can use a UI to get the, the index XML of the, the catalog and uh, expose or show you so the, the different um, yeah, catalogs that are running in, in your cluster and also which uh, applications and which versions run in, 
in this case, this is our interface, but yeah, it can be also um, displayed in the interface that for CRs and, and chats. Yeah. Uh, here we have the, the app. Um, so yeah, here we have the app um, values, so the config values that we are providing as a users. Uh, so here I giving the cluster ID of all, where we are going to, to apply this this uh, this application and also I, I am uh, passing the same uh, property m uh, with a different value all uh, to the to the application uh, we will check in that this config map is applied and applying is there and now we are going to to see and the app CR application CR so this is the, the application CR uh, as you see, it has the name of the, the instance, the app instance, the namespace where it's going to be applied, the kube config with the configuration uh, of, the, yeah, of the access to the, the cluster is going to be installed. And you see there is a user config and a config. So the config is the automatic config that we generate in our contemplating cluster with the, the cluster values, if it's the cluster speed, the provider, everything. And then the user config is the one that we have just created with this um, value equal, equal to, to Ola. And then the version and everything is, is there, right? So we are going to, to apply now the, um, these applications here. Okay, and now we check that it's really apply and it's running. Um, at this moment, uh, if we wait a bit, the app operator is going to watch for the events and it will detect that there is a new application there. Um, so what I want to demonstrate here is, um, yeah, after uh, some time the, oops, wait a moment. Okay. Yeah, after some time, the app operator has done his job, has created a configuration, has created the charge CR, and has pushed this, this charge CR to the tenant cluster, to the API, to the API uh, of this cluster to, to the tenant cluster. So it's, the, the, it's there. And also, it can show you um, what is the status of, of the application uh, in the in the end environment. So here, the application is already deployed. Uh, it has been deployed yeah, at that time, and the version that is running is this one. So um, now to check this is true, we are going to the tenant cluster. So we are switching context to the tenant side, which is a totally different cluster. Um, first, I see that the, our chat operator is running, and as I told you before, we use Helm under the hood. So it's Tiller, this is not Helm 3 yet. We are almost done, but we know yet. So it's using help too. And at this moment, yeah, you see the operator and tiller are running the cluster. And now we are going to check the logs of our operator. Uh, so we see that uh, yeah, it's, it's doing the, the job that is expected. And it's, it's already watch uh, and take action for the new chart CR that the app operator has pushed to to this tenant cluster. And yeah, as you see here, yeah, sorry, <laughs> a bunch of tests, but yeah, you, you, you can see that it's looking for this new chart here, which is called my app. And at some point is is uh, yeah, is deploying, so deploying the, the installation and setting the, the status to deploy. Uh, yeah, we see that the, everything has been deployed to the cluster. So we see the pods, deployment, uh, Cluster also all the package, uh, all the application package has been deployed and all the resources has been created. And let's make sure the, the bots are running. Let's make sure the ingress is also is also there. And now uh, we can call this uh, this host and check uh, what is there. So in theory, we have applied and different configurations, right? Uh, in the app catalog, uh, in, the, in the cluster level, and in the user level, uh, we are using, we have used the same variable, which is M, 
Um, uh, in that catalog, we define hello. In the cluster value, I define hey. And in the user config, I define uh, hola. So in theory, we if uh, app operator has done his work and it's merged currently the three levels of configurations, it will have preference the, the latest configuration that we apply the user configuration. So we will we'll see um hola. Oops. Yeah, hola. So there. and now what we are going to do to check this is working, we are going back to the control plane quickly and we are going to edit the, the configuration the configuration, the user config. So we are going to this user config and we are moving Ola. So now the configuration has changed. The app operator is going to act again. It's going to, to generate uh, all, all, the, uh, all this merging uh, of the map, config maps and generating a single config map with the M that now should be the app catalog value, which is hello. Hopefully. So now we check that the, um, the values are changed. So this is the, the values that are, pass, are applying to the chart values. And we see that, yeah, uh, the M has been changed to hello. Also see that the chart here is created and it says deployed and has changed the revision three. So yeah, hopefully it's, it's deployed. And yeah, and we can see also in the logs that the, the yeah, the, the operator is, is setting the, the value to deploy it after some time. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the pod are running, press, and we can see now hello. So yeah, this is, yeah, this is uh, the different uh, types of configurations, and this is how we structure the, 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 yeah, the deployment pipeline, pipeline of all this app platform. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm off very quick, and I would like to finish. I have five minutes, fifteen minutes, with the future plans. So, what we are working on right now, we are improving the user experience. So, for example, as I said before, we um, don't the app catalog custom resource is just an information informational uh, resource, but there is nothing in there, and we want to build an operator which actually takes all the all the entries all the app definitions in the catalog and creates a, a, new, a new custom resource why well because we have realized when when you have a big catalog like the hem stable the old hem stable catalog there is a bunch there is a lot of uh, different applications there and for, uh, having a ua or or a command line trying to manage all this index YAML with all the dimensions is, is crazy and it's not scalable. So we want to rely in the same patterns uh, that we define, like declarative and driving by Kubernetes and all this thing, uh, to create a new uh, a new CR that will hold this specific information for each entry of the app catalog. Also, we want to improve the validation and the porting. So right now. If you apply some some values that are not really uh, fine, so it's, uh, there is a typo in YAML or there is uh, yeah some value that is not really in the schema, it tells you that it's not fine. But there are some of them that are still not right, and, and we need to to fix that. And also mm, here the defaulting part is really important. So in order to to uh, enhance the experience of the users, we want to really um, and the, uh, decrease the number of uh, requir required files that you need to specify in the app and CR in order to deploy something. So we can figure out a lot of things from, from the, the environment. And just with the name of the application, the app catalog, and the version, the rest of the things is something, if you don't want to apply any specific configuration or something, and this is something that you can we can populate in, in our operator or in our emission controllers. Then uh, we want to improve the the plugin that we have right now. So it's not uh, it does not have all the features that we would like to have. So it's something we are working on. Uh, we want to pursue the goal of having automatic updates, so customers can define like okay for this application. Uh, I want to automatic upgrades until a major release or something like that. Then we have an operator that manages uh, the, the app is always in the latest version. 
uh, we want to create the concept of app stacks or template apps, uh, app of, of, or template of apps, and that will define like sets of different configuration, like observability stack. And this observability stack will come with Loki, with uh, um, Jagger, with all the common tools that everyone use. Um, even some of them can be personalized. And so instead of going one by one, you can, uh, with just defining this stack, uh, deploy, every, deploy everything that is needed. Right? And then there is a going effort in, in the C caps, in the upstream community, uh, creating a, a new concept, which is the application CRD, that uh, will be a standard way to define uh, all these things that we are talking about today. But uh, we, every every company will rely on this specification on, on this schema, and we will adapt at some point our app platform uh, to follow this. Uh, and we can benefit from the work of different uh, vendors, and not only the one that we are doing. So yeah, that will be everything. Thank you for listening. And if there is any question, thank you very much, Fernando, for a wonderful presentation. We have about five minutes for questions, so if anybody has any questions, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A, and we'll get to as many as we can by the end of the hour. How yeah, errors? Have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just uh, uh, read from Stefan uh, how errors and invalid configurations are handled. Um, so as I said, the the Kubernetes API already when you define the schema, it's allowed you to to define some some validation. So that will be like the first line of validation. Then uh, there we we are working on on an admission controller. Uh, so we started with OPA, but uh, we have found that it's not really um, uh, helping uh, with some parts of our defaulting and validation. So we have created our own admission controller. And in the admission controllers, we want to configure, or we want to check, yeah, um, and all the logic to, to check that, the, the, for example, the, 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 the version that you have defined assist in the catalog as a simple check. That right now is not working, and we would like to know. So, if you commit like a typo, typo, typo in the in the specification of of your resource, uh, we can quickly get you feedback. Like this, this version is not there, or, or any other kind of of configuration error. And also, what we have implemented is uh, when we are managing the values, so the different config maps that are defined through the through the different types of CRs. Uh, we try to check when you upload this this values element that the values element is valid, and, and yeah, it has not any um, yeah error or type. And in case that is containing, then we report it back to to the the CR status. So that will be the three levels of kind of validation that we handle uh, right now, and that we will need to improve. Can this handle deployment loads across multiple cloud providers? Uh, yes, it can. So at the end, uh, the, the application CR contains this Qf config file and the, the reference. And, and there in the Qf config file, you can put whatever cluster you want. It can be EKS, it can be, um, I don't know, uh, your mini Qf <laughs> in your machine or whatever. Uh, and then from, from one cluster, from your this meta cluster, you can, you can uh, deploy in, in whatever type of, of Kubernetes cluster. I mean, our, our interface is, is Kubernetes API. So as long as, as you have the operator, the chart operator in the, in the tenant cluster, in the end cluster, and you have your app operator in the kind of meta, meta cluster, then it should work. 
Okay, do we have anybody else? We have about one minute left. One once, going twice. Okay, well, if no one has any other questions, uh, we'll call this a wrap, we'll call this a day. Um, I wanna thank Fernando again for a wonderful presentation today and for everyone for attending. As I said before, today's recording and slides will be posted later today on the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io. Thank you again, everyone, for attending today's webinar, and we will see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Larry. Bye.